Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KitBadger.com. Out here today to share a pretty amazing three-day course I was able to attend down in Southern Oregon at Thunder Ranch. If you're unfamiliar with Thunder Ranch and Clint's, well, it's basically a national treasure. Guy cut his teeth in Vietnam and still to this day incredibly driven and passionate about teaching students and equipping them with the skills they need to potentially face violence. Really, really amazing guy. I, as I mentioned, was fortunate enough to attend a three-day course down there, and it was kind of a private course that I just fortuitously happened to fall into. Basically, me and a bunch of doctors. But that three-day course started, first half of kind of the first day was a lecture portion with Clint, going through kind of not only some of the how, but a big part of the why with respect to the application of violence and ultimately gunfighting. Really, really well thought out and well articulated, albeit very colorful, explanation of a lot of things that we're gonna be working on over the next couple days. Right, I'm gonna need to carry a nine millimeter. Okay, great. Yeah, it's okay. And everybody, a couple 40s, right? A 40 or something? Yeah, okay, good. Great, no problem. Uh, the deal with it is, is I always remind people that if you shot him with a handgun and the guy kept coming, a threat kept coming, what would you do? And of course the answer is shoot him again. And in theory, the actual answer is you should shoot better, not faster, easier said than done when you're shitting yourself. Okay, but at least I'm honest about it, all right? And the deal with it is, I would say the same thing about a rifle. If I shot a guy and he didn't do what I wanted him to do, I'd shoot him again. Okay, and it's just that simple. Always in your minds, I never worry about calibers per se. I mean, I wouldn't carry a 380 or 25, okay? But it took two atomic bombs. <laughs> One thing I definitely appreciate about Clint and his cadre is the ability to pivot depending on the class, whether different factors. So while we were supposed to be working on pistol that first day, yeah, it was pretty cold. It was snowing and working on pistol, especially manipulating that trigger when everyone's really cold, might not work out as well. So instead of starting with pistol, we went ahead and started with rifle. Got out there on the line and started getting some reps in. Like a lot of courses, kind of crawl, walk, run. And initially worked on just establishing a good zero making sure everyone had a zero with their rifles, and then kind of moving into some different skill building exercises. There you go, Charlie. Okay, great. Okay. So then you gotta protect him. I'll protect his ass. Okay. <laughs> Bert, you gotta like, however it comes out, man, shoot somebody, you're a rock star down here. Three okay. shots, right? Well, on day one, we didn't have tons of time behind the gun. Once we got into day two, pretty much got after it. Immediately started back on that range and getting to work through a number of different drills with our long guns. Really fun being able to go out there and get those reps. And on top of that, really awesome facility. Being able to especially work through different shooting as far as transitions working from maybe your cardboard target and then having to turn and engage steel up on the hillside. Up, uh, five rounds stealing to the chest. As the day progressed, the class also got to progress with kind of building on different skills and ultimately working different things to include getting to do some positional shooting from barricades 
and being able to incorporate it in such a way that we actually got to do stuff with basically a partner. One person moving up, engaging from barricade, moving back, and then the other partner moving up and engaging from the barricade, working through different positions and giving people the opportunity to actually communicate with their partner, which pretty big component when it comes to it when you think through basically shoot move and communicate so being able to kind of incorporate all those things in some different little exercises and then fast forward building on kind of everything getting to actually move through some kind of dynamic drills where you end up getting to go ahead and engage from different positions then after break engage another target 90 degrees and essentially work through a number of different barricades as you make your way along. And finally getting to that run stage where actually get to work with your partner and shoot, move, and communicate. Working across different barricades, getting really good hits on steel. Moving! Move! Beyond just carbine, this was also a pistol course. So the second half of day two, as well as quite a bit of day three, was dedicated to pistol. And Clint himself would obviously give some people some very colorful corrections if they needed it. But he also has a really awesome cadre there who themselves are all very talented, skilled shooters and they were able to be on the line and give a lot of people corrections and basically help everyone kind of get to a higher level. And with that, we were able to take a class of myself and a bunch of doctors and go to probably a much higher level than you would otherwise get, which is one, a testament to Clint and his cadre, as well as people that are just honestly pretty smart people and open to and receptive to instruction. So we were able to get to do some pretty cool things. One thing that I really appreciated was being able to shoot through essentially moving targets. The way Clint has some targets set up is they'll basically move left to right, like paper targets. But what gets kind of tricky sometimes is while those targets are moving behind that row of targets, there's steel targets. And so having to basically know what your target is and what is beyond it, going back to those four weapon safety rules and being able to engage and get good hits without hitting something that you shouldn't hit on the other side of your target. And so being able to work through that with pistol as well as with rifle, I think was really beneficial. To the end of Thunder Ranch being an amazing facility, they also have a really neat shoot house there. And while we didn't get a dip into too much of it, in part because CQB, especially one man CQB, is a incredibly kind of deep subject. We did kind of dip our toes for no other reason than it's like, hey, we don't have tons of time for this, but if you find yourself in this position in your house, like here's some concepts and principles, 
we're gonna do a couple runs. And so being able to actually work through that shoot house and negotiate it and solve problems as they arose. I think some people got some really good reps going through there, myself included. The last day we got to explore the longer range side of the facility, which was really cool. On the one hand, you have kind of a KD range, known distance that goes out from 100, 200, 300. I want to say out to like 700 yards maybe. All kinds of different varying sizes of steel. And that I think itself was really beneficial. On the one hand, you have full size steel targets, basically the height of an average man. And so depending on what optic you have that people are running, the ability to look through your optic and say, okay, like that is a average sized man at 200 yards or 300 yards. And being able to essentially get kind of that visual reference with respect to essentially kind of hasty ranging as far as this is how big someone is in my optic, whether it's a red dot or something else that you're running, maybe a magnified optic, something along those lines. And then being able to shoot out at all these different steel targets, pretty cool. Not to mention over kind of on the one side, I guess the left side of the range, really, really cool setup as far as all these different kind of barricades, opticals, things along those lines, starting initially with a old school phone booth, which depending on how old you are, you may have never seen one, but got to do a really cool kind of run and gun, essentially working your way all the way across all these different obstacles and getting hits out on steel from some unconventional positions. Really fun runs right there.
tires and engage from here. Watch the tire, watch the center. A little bit more, watch that center. And lastly, we got to do some pretty fun stuff as far as getting everyone on the same page, breaking shots at more or less the same time. So we had everyone out there online, about a dozen of us, and basically on the command, everyone breaking those shots at the same time, engaging, I think at one point, three or four different targets simultaneously, which was pretty cool. Stand by! Stand by! Five, four. Yeah. Okay. On the line. What are my thoughts overall on that course? It was amazing. On the one hand, Clint, Heidi, the entire cadre, wonderful people, incredibly passionate about giving people legitimate skills to arm themselves in a uncertain world. None of it's geared towards like, hey, we're gonna go make you IDPA, Ipsic Grandmaster, three gun, blah, blah, blah. Not that there isn't value in that, but that is not this. And to what this is, like very, very reinforced over and over again about basically gunfighting and going back to those kind of three pillars of shoot, move, and communicate. And being able to actually do different scenarios that reinforce those, like partner-based scenarios where you are shooting, you are moving, and you are communicating. I think it was really cool and something that often kind of really isn't emphasized in a number of different courses. So that was definitely really cool. Facility, amazing facility. On the one hand, just really nice and clean, like well-structured shoot house beautiful and just all the different ranges too like really well kept but on top of that just the ability because of the way the ranges were set up to be able to engage here turn 90 degrees engage here and just opening up things that lots of times you won't get at a number of different ranges overall definitely a incredible experience and the other thing I will say, which is a testament not only to Clint and his cadre, but also all the guys I was there with, a bunch of doctors, doctor, doctor, doctor. Basically, the synergy between those two, one, the cadre being able to scale with the students and honestly, the students being able to absorb information allowed that three-day course to probably go a lot further than maybe some other three-day courses would have gone because you have the cadre able to transfer information and you have the students ability to absorb and build on that information so that you can basically just go further and further rather than being like hey this is our curriculum for day one day two day three they were able to be like, oh, you guys are picking this up? Cool, like we're gonna ramp it up a little further and be able to go do more advanced stuff. I think that was really, really cool. If you have the opportunity to go down there and train with Clint and his staff at Thunder Ranch, I would encourage you to do so. On the one hand, probably be a incredibly memorable experience. And the other side of it, you're gonna come away with some really solid skills. And lastly, special thank you to Jock and Nouveau Loom production company. I believe it stands for New Illumination. They happened to be down there collecting a bunch of content that they were doing, and I was able to use that. The lion's share of this video is content that I was able to get from them. Super talented guys, very grateful to be able to use some of that footage that they got and yeah, make this video happen. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to you seeing you next time. Where you go and watch what you do. Gotta watch what you say and who it said to. You gotta watch who you cross and watch how you move. Let's watch.